Labdien visiem diskusijas dalībniekiem, klausītājiem. panelists, the listeners. Today's discussion on whether foreign nationals in Latvia receive sufficient information uh, on COVID-19 and are able to adapt to the conditions of the pandemic uh, takes place during the third lockdown. And this is a third uh, discussion organized by think tank Providus on awareness uh, of uh, the Latvian residents uh, about COVID-19. And actually today, this is not the only such discussion because um, just uh, a few moments ago, uh, a similar event uh, streamed from a Latvian, a so-called Latgalian embassy, Gors, just ended uh, on uh, whether Latgal is ready to exit as a lockdown together with the remaining of Latvia. Uh, considering the previous uh, two discussions that were devoted to the topics of awareness of the Russian-speaking nationals or residents, uh, today uh, we would like to uh, focus on a, a group that is, so to say, invisible in the COVID context, and these are foreign nationals. According to uh, July 2021 um, data, we had uh, more than 97,000 uh, foreign nationals living in Latvia, which is uh, quite a considerable proportion of uh, Latvian um, residents. And uh, though uh, if we speak in numbers, this uh, proportion is not so large, but it is still a large group and it requires information on public health. We organized this discussion together with an organization called Make Room, and we will focus on awareness of uh, foreign students and information to foreign students about COVID-19 as it was mentioned by our technical assistant. The discussion will take place in Latvian and in English, and a simultaneous translation will be available. Uh, so please choose the respective language if you feel that you need interpretation by selecting the respective language under the globe icon or interpretation icon. Please feel free to ask questions, uh, to send your question, uh, to send your comments either by raising hand in Zoom or by writing, or you can also ask questions and submit comments on a Providus channel where this discussion is streamed at the moment. So without much ado, let us... Uh, uh, let us uh, start the discussion, and we will begin by introduction of the panelists. Our co-moderator is uh, Mick Stelmenc, uh, the head of uh, our partner that uh, actively works with our with foreign nationals in Latvia. We will also have the following panelists: uh, head of ISEC in Latvia, students Quadrio uh, Konuga. Hello. Pleased to have you in our discussion panel today. Uh, we have another foreign student, a student from India, Abu Sohalo Rehman. We will also have someone who has uh, resided in Latvia for a long time, who is actually a, a lecturer at the University of Latvia, Garrett Hamilton. We will also have, and we are very happy that we will have this panelist panelists, representatives from several universities, and one of the panelists is uh, Smoidra Germanus from Riga Stradinch University, the Dean of the uh, Foreign Students uh, Department. We will also have Jan Salitis, the Director of the Student Service of the University of Latvia, and finally we will have a uh, representatives from the Ministry of Education and Science, Lena Levada. So let us start our panel discussion and let us begin by outlining briefly uh, 
The size of the foreign student uh, community has anything changed uh, during the COVID-19 period? And uh, please provide brief answers so that we could proceed without uh, any delay and so that we could start discussing uh, matters that related directly to COVID-19. So how many students have you admitted during um, this academic year, foreign students? And uh, if you have these numbers, maybe proportionally, you can um, state uh, how many of them come from the EU, from EEA, and from third countries. Maybe I will begin by uh, providing information about Riga Stradinch University. Currently, we have 2,600 students, approximately, of which uh, less than 5% uh, come from third countries. Of late, the admission trends have not changed. I cannot really claim that the pandemics has in any way affected as they admitted foreign students, so it has been stable. Thank you, Mr. Salidis. At the University of Latvia, we have uh, fewer foreign students. We have approximately 800. And most of them come from the European countries. And most uh, study medicine. I cannot provide um, accurate numbers because I have not prepared, but uh, I would say approximately one third of them comes from third countries. And the question to the representative of the Ministry of Education, um, Ms. Levita, uh, maybe you can provide information about other universities and higher education establishments in Latvia, just approximate numbers. Thank you. It will be uh, difficult for me to comment on each and every university or higher education establishment, but uh, we uh, have uh, approximately 9,000 foreign students, of which approximately 70% more or less, uh, because it's difficult to tell at the moment since the data are still being uh, entered, approximately 70% 70, 70 of them come from third countries and mostly from India and Uzbekistan. Thank you. Mix, uh, maybe I will give the floor to you now uh, to uh, ask questions directly to students. And I would also like to tell as a panelist and listeners that as moderators, we will also switch languages between Latvian and English. Yeah, uh, thank you, Eva. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, just to bring us closer to the topic of the discussion of how well the information in regard to COVID uh, uh, spread of the COVID virus in Latvia is received among the foreign nationals. I would like to ask uh, Garrett and, and Abu and also Quadri uh, to comment um, very briefly about the first feelings. I remember myself when the first uh, COVID case was registered in Latvia. It was in March 2020, a bit more than a year ago. And I was uh, with a friend of mine sitting at a cafe and there was a live press conference uh, with the Minister of Health and, and she was informing the society in Latvia that the first case is registered and, and it has come from, from there and there. And I just want to ask you, you guys, Garrett and Abu and, and Quadri, how did you feel and were you here in Latvia in March 2020? Did you follow the news about the spread of, uh, of the virus in, in Europe? And, and what were your feelings at, at that moment when, when the COVID uh, came to Latvia? So maybe I can start with, with Garrett. Okay, yeah, so I'll speak in English because of the provision of the translation, it makes it easier. Um, yeah, one of the, I think for, for me, um, I had, I was actually probably one of the first people in Latvia to be in quarantine because um, I had been to a conference in London and had just come back and I was, and I don't fly and I had and I'd gone through Germany and um, I had arrived um, to get the bus from from Vilnius, and I got a text message from a friend saying, "Right, you're an educator. 
you've been abroad um, to, the, to, to the UK, you have to now isolate for, for 14 days. And I think at that particular point, um, because of having to be all over the place at the, at the time, and also, I mean, I think if you're relatively international, you had lots of discussions with people from different countries at the same time. So I think my memory at the time was trying to kind of work out what was happening in Latvia, but then also being told by friends what was happening in other places. And it became a bit of a quite interesting comparison. But I think I was worried, actually, quite, quite a lot. It was quite scary. And I, I and I did have symptoms briefly. And I had a kind of kind of lady come and stick stuff up my, well, I think up my nose, for example, and a kind of very scary um, kind of white suit to my apartment. And I kind of just want, and I just thought this is very, very odd, but at least I'm getting tested. So that's a good sign. I was, I was happy at that point, I think, strangely enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Garrett. Um, yes, so I see Quadri, you have raised the hand out at the end and you also as a country director for a foreign student association, ISEC, you, you maybe can also briefly introduce of what were the feelings, not, not just for you, but also uh, within your community, your friends and other, and other foreign students at that time. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. This is an important topic. Um, for, for us, uh, what we do in our organization, we create opportunities for young people around the world, meaning our organization is one of the people in Latvia that was affected. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We so can our organization was one of, all right. Our organization was one of the uh, organization in Latvia that was affected. We have a lot of part, global partner around the world that young people need to go there to work, to do internship, but they couldn't make it because it was really difficult, even though we have a lot of partners in Latvia that are supposed to work. They couldn't work. We even have a partner like uh, some university was supposed to start project. We couldn't start project with them. And then uh, for me as an international, even though coming from Estonia, I'm moving to Riga. It was really challenging because all the information I was supposed to get, I wasn't getting it in Riga because I was like, what is going on? Number one, I don't understand the language. It was my first time in the country. I, I couldn't understand what is going on. So I need to ref I need to use every information based on what is happening in other countries, like what is happening in our offices, our global office press telling us news about the update happening in Latvia, <laughs> which is very funny. Like, okay, based on the European Union portal, they're not using exactly the, the facts, factors of what is happening in Latvia. They're using the information that was submitted to the European Union to communicate to us that we can communicate to with our members in the organization in Latvia, which was really a challenge because you're communicating things that is not really communicated in an easy way in your own entity, in your own country. So it was really like a very, even though I couldn't give a report to them to tell them exactly what is going on. So it was a really challenging for us to be able to adapt or for us to, to understand what is going on as an international. And then communication was a word of mouth, which there's no platform that can really direct us on what to do. And some of the students that we work with, even though in the universities, they don't have like a newsletter, like in my organization, we have a, a weekly letter that's sent to us that said, okay, this is what is going on. But these students don't have it. So I need to find a way to communicate with them based on the information we're getting from European Union. So for, for, for most schools, I just think uh, um, the planning was not properly done to make sure that things need to be in order by creating like a risk management team to take action on what is the need of this COVID and how this COVID can help. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, um, thank you, Quadri. Yes, uh, just just before we, we continue, I would very much uh, um, request uh, Quadri and, and Abu also, maybe you can speak a little little slower. So for our translator, it, is, uh, it will be easier to translate for people who, who might be more comfortable listening to the discussion in, in Latvian. Okay, oh, but, but thank you, perfect. thank you, Quadri, very much. And yes, uh, my, my follow up question also to Abu, um, a bit more in, in general, where do foreign nationals and especially foreign students receive information, not just about COVID, but about regular, regular things that happen in Latvia in regard to politics or, or certain initiatives? Like, where do people and especially foreign students receive information? Well, thank you for the question, Max, and thanks for the comments from Kadri as well. So, uh, yes, coming to the information, how we foreigners are receiving. So majority of them are following LSM English versions so far. 
and the letter. So these are the two basic versions everyone is constantly looking at, especially during the COVID times. So I remember like I'm uh, running the uh, student organization in the ILSEF, Indian Latin Cultural and Economic Forum. So whenever students used to write us, they like, why there is no information on LSM? So where can we find information? So these were the questions uh, regularly raised to us. Uh, coming to the students, uh, students usually rely on the information from the universities. So I agree with one of the point what Kadri said, uh, some of the information sources what university was providing us, as well as the amount of information and the speed of the information during the COVID times was a bit slow, which we all have to agree. And uh, majority of the students had this issue uh, coming up to the, you know, like reliable source of the information. Uh, so there's uh, some of the organization like, for example, Make Room, uh, it was also like uh, filling up the gap by providing this uh, regular WhatsApp group chat. So where students are receiving instant information the moment the news comes in LSM because it takes time to get translated to the English version. So this is where the time is lagging and students need to plan and uh, not just students like when I'm talking from the uh, perspective of the Indian side, we are uh, currently 2300 uh, registered nationals in Latvia so far, right includes people who are working for IT companies as well. So everyone had the same issue like where to find the information because uh, less than 5% of the Indian population as well speaks Latvian or understands even at the basic level. Uh, so, in my opinion, uh, LSM played a big role as well as uh, organizations like Make Room and uh, some of the other Facebook groups like uh, Expats in Latvia. These are the places where we used to get information and uh, the majority of the opinion from the students was like university could have been a little more efficient and, uh, uh, you know, like uh, speed up the process of providing the information, maybe like a newsletter or something like a, a official uh, WhatsApp group. Okay, so you don't really need to come up with a uh, official uh, letter but please give us some information because students are confused as uh, you see that not everyone is a uh, uh, from coming from eu but there are some population which are coming from a third country so they need information and they are confused so this is uh, our analysis during the covid times especially next hand over to you yeah so and and just before we move to the representatives from the universities. I would also very, very briefly ask uh, again you, Abu uh, Quadri and also Garrett, how would you evaluate how well the information was uh, received by foreign students in, in, in Latvia and also about the availability of the information that was spread across? How would you evaluate from, from one to 10? What were the major challenges and, and do you feel that uh, students were well informed or, or not? Yeah, um, can I go? Yeah, uh, what, what I think students were not well informed because uh, even though in the university, there is no proper planning. Like uh, the only thing, because in other countries, in other, in other civilized countries, what is going on is immediately when the COVID hits, people started having like a risk management health officer on board to educate people what this is all about. But in the universities, even though today they don't even, there's no um, health officers that can advise you based on the situation or can, can guide you or what to do. A lot of international students already take COVID tests. I can mention like a lot of universities in Latvia, like a lot of international students take COVID tests in their country because they want to have the, the, the EU certificate. They need to come back here to take another COVID test again, Co um, COVID vaccination, sorry, again. Which means, even though some weird thing is, most of these students are even medical students in Latvia, and they were really, they already already understand what is COVID vaccine can do to the future. But because they want to go to school, they want to attend classes, they need to take this test again. Can you see that there's no a lot of support system for the young people, for the uh, uh, students, international students in, in in Latvia that is out of the EU that doesn't have the the certification. Of vaccination so these have been like a lot of problems as well so uh the next step the call to action is if there is a way of uh, um having somebody in place not only somebody that also speak latvian but somebody that can also communicate in a way that can understand the global mindset of what is going on out there in terms of or somebody that can be in position of health officer that can guide the students in all these schools as well yeah thank you so much <clears throat> Can maybe I'll mention next. There's something that I think um, I've always worried about in general, and that has been that 
that students from abroad don't get much information in certain in certain ways. And um, I mean, in our own program, our program directors, well, from director, I suppose it's the same person, is kind of very, I suppose, kind of personally, um, kind of personally um, involved in that process. And we are quite a kind of tight knit program. And, you know, I think it's important um, that we do so. But I think, I mean, sometimes I do wonder whether the university itself gets information very well in the first place and is actually handed down to the university um, from higher places. And I suppose, I mean, one of the things I, I, I can't quite put my finger on in this pandemic is whether the information is there, is not there because there is no information or whether the information is just not passed on and it's quite, and I think that's quite frustrating in a way. But I don't think, I, I think it applies more broadly in society, actually. Sometimes you kind of wonder, does somebody know this, but they're not telling me? Or has it just not been published yet? Or is it actually not known? And that's, I think, outside the education sector and in it, I think, as well, it's quite frustrating as a, as a kind of general thing. But then I suppose, in a way, the pandemic was quite was quite I mean yeah I mean it was a bit of a new situation but it is quite complicated I, I, I think sometimes just to know whether is it just me that doesn't know or whether it's kind of everybody doesn't know and um, I think that's quite um that's quite a confusing thing at times actually it makes me slightly nervous as I said yeah and Abu, I see that you turned on the microphone. Yes, uh, Mix. Yeah, I would like to add some points about um, how the universities or the other organizations, they uh, went on ahead. Okay, I would like to rate maybe for the universities 7 out of 10 because uh, uh, still it's a not a bad number because they picked up in the, in the meanwhile and eventually they started giving out a uh, good amount of information because they realized the students deserve this information uh, immediately and uh, accurately as possible. Right. So as uh, I was working with the Indian embassy, so sometimes so uh, when we have to report them what is happening in Latvia, because we don't have an embassy present in Latvia. So we had to give them the information like how many students are there, is someone suffering from COVID, does someone need help? So it was even difficult for us as an organization to gather all the info. But uh, because uh, we have to understand that uh, before COVID, not any organization, nor the university had an effective channel, nor had a crisis management team or so on, where we had collect information and how to reach out to the people. So I believe that uh, during the COVID situation, uh, everyone of us, including the universities, uh, the student organizations, or any other NGOs, we learned how to manage these crises in a better way and to reach out to people in order to provide the information, especially in English when you're living in a foreign country. Uh, so in English, effectively. So I think so far, uh, the WhatsApp groups, uh, which uh, came up and the Facebook groups, which came up during this time although it is unofficial they played a, a very crucial part so i guess there are still a lot of draw drawbacks uh, from the university side as still many students are uh, uh, so, so far disappointed that uh, even though there were uh, things could have been done in a better way and information could have been given in a better way they always kept uh, you know like the information was lagging and students were kept hanging so the, the, i mean like these were the compliance which came from majority of the students i'm not talking from one university perspective but from all the universities which are present in latvia so i believe like uh, we uh, as a panel or we as uh, you know like individuals have to find a solution how we can mitigate these problems and overcome uh, all these you know like challenges and uh, put up a proper information source for the foreigners especially in latvia Okay, thank you. Thank you, Garrett, uh, Quadri and Abu. So I heard just to sum up uh, very briefly that most of the challenges that, that you guys mentioned were uh, it was the information was lagging a bit in time that it came uh, a lot later than it was actually necessary. They, the universities tried to inform and sometimes the information was not well received or it was not well spread among the community of, of foreign students. And that also there were a lot of um, initiatives that supported the work of the universities and the, and the public media platforms just to spread the information. 
Okay, so if you have something else to add, you can you can also write it in the chat. But now I'll pass it to Eva and, and we can hear a bit more about how the universities were preparing the support systems in regard to information to foreign students. Thanks, Paul Diesnik. Thank you. And I will continue in Latvian as I'm turning to, to university representatives and also the representative of, of the Ministry of Science and Education here. Um, I'll begin with the following question. And uh, this question came to my mind as a result of Garrett's comment, who uh, claims that it is not really clear whether this information is not spread because it's not available or it's not, not disseminated. And in this regard, I would like to ask uh, to representatives of uh, universities and also the representative of the Ministry of Education, mm, so do you and in which way, uh, from the point of view of informant, of informing foreign students, did you have any communication or information acquisition from the state chancery, like communication department, or it was uh, via the COVID-19 informative site, or maybe you had some other type of cooperation with the state administration? Uh, representatives of state administrations that were tasked uh, with uh, providing information about COVID-19. And the second question, in which way uh, did the universities ensure that information is provided to their foreign students on what takes place in Latvia uh, in the uh, COVID-19 context? Anyone willing to be the first? Uh, I could be the first um, about Rigastradinch University. I would like to provide a short description of how it has taken place uh, for the last year and a half. I think the beginning of the pandemic was quite shocking for the society in general, foreign students and also the universities. Uh, very briefly, um, I can explain how we proceeded from uh, March 2020 uh, to this moment in time, how we have informed the students what uh, primary problem I saw during this very long past. Riga Stradinch University, when the pandemic hit, um, we uh, started teaching all the classes remotely, and most of the students uh, left Latvia and returned to their home countries. If we speak about nationals of third countries, uh, a large part of them stayed in Latvia. And if EU embassies uh, EU member state embassies uh, at the very beginning of uh, the pandemics when we started closing the borders were very active in informing their citizens about repatriation flights, uh, about the need to leave Latvia immediately to return home because the borders will be closed. Uh, but uh, speaking about the information provided uh, by embassies, I think what concerns uh, nationals of third countries, the information exchange was not that good, at least according to our experience. For example, Israel uh, citizens and India citizens were not really provided uh, uh, information about the possibility to return immediately, maybe only at the end of uh, April or maybe in May only. I think in May uh, was the time when Indian embassy actually started asking us uh, if we have any uh, Indian students and whether they would like to go home. And this is when the, all the borders were already closed. What did we do at that time? Of course, the shock was bilateral, both for the lecturers as well as for the university, because um, professors, lecturers had to radically change the way of teaching because we had not worked before remotely. And here we speak about regulated professions uh, where foreign students uh, study, and it's very difficult to, or close to impossible, to have remote studies for these professions. And of course, 
devam tāds informācijas, tāds, kas mūsu rīdzīgi. We provided uh, information uh, that we had, that, that was available to us on daily places, uh, like about studies, about uh, daily matters, and also about repatriation flights, if this information was available. But this was a passive way. But also, we regularly had um, meetings in Panopto format, uh, where people could ask questions, uh, any questions, like about um, practical matters, about studies. And of course, Riga Stradinč University and the colleagues are professionals, uh, professionals in uh, the uh, health sector, and, and we provided information uh, what concerns uh, the students who have fallen ill. Uh, we also provided recommendations on what to do to avoid getting infected. And then quite soon uh, we received information that the uh, third country nationals were invited to receive social support. And I know that there were problems. And I know that the organization My Room also helped students uh, in preparing these applications. And we as uh, a university also participated. And this assistance was um, uh, was uh, to be provided to uh, third country nationals who have stayed in Latvia with limited uh, means uh, because banks did not work in many countries and parents could not send money. So it was quite problematic also what concerns the social uh, services, like when we called them, what documents should be submitted, what they will ask for, and they didn't understand uh, anything what to do because there was this decision that support is to be provided, but that's the beginning it was quite chaotic and the university could not really help much because there was no detailed information. The second problem that I saw uh, in this process was uh, since uh, May, uh, there was a free access uh, to uh, vaccination. At the beginning, the, foreign, uh, the state administration claimed that foreign students will not be vaccinated. Then they said uh, that they could be vaccinated. But then the problem was how to vaccinate them. Because for EU nationals, there was not a mandatory requirement to receive a personal ID number, but then if you wanted to get vaccinated, you should have a, a personal ID number. Then there was a problem of receiving the certificate, uh, so the people were vaccinated. So, and all of these levels, we were like mediated. Like a university between these organizations uh, that as a vaccinate uh, students or provide social assistance to students. So, and we have always tried to help. There were also complaints uh, that when uh, people called the call centers uh, concerning vaccination, that as soon as they hear English, they just hang up and, and no conversation takes place. Then there, of course, uh, were um, cases when a student fell ill, that, which made uh, the situation very difficult. Yes, we can provide consultations by phone. Yes, the disease prevention and uh, control center shows interest. Yes, they call people and, and they provide consultations. But what concerns foreign students, they usually do not have a family doctor in Latvia. And usually the disease prevention and control center appoints such a family doctor, but they are not informed if this family doctor speaks English or doesn't speak English. And we have had situations when students call family doctors, but as soon as they hear English, they just hang up. Yes, we can... Um, help by phone, but we cannot, uh, as a university, uh, give them an English-speaking family doctor. And I think the last problem in this, in this list of problems where we serve as mediators between students and uh, state administration, and here I have to speak about the moment when uh, the vaccination certificates, and in particular what concerns third country nationals, these uh, certificates had to be made um, 
interoperable in the EU and also in Latvia, and this process was very difficult. And I have to say thank you to the Ministry of Education because they started uh, dealing with this problem in September. Uh, we didn't have many such students in our university, but they had completed uh, COVID-19 vaccination in their home countries, in third countries, and it was necessary to verify uh, this uh, certification with the National Health Service. Unfortunately, uh, it was uh, promised that uh, it will take a month to review these uh, documents, like if you submitted documents in July or August, you didn't receive the answer in a month. And it was quite surprising that the answer was uh, sent eventually only in Latvian, so the communication was in English. And in these response letters, uh, it was usually claimed that you should go to the municipal self-service centers, uh, provide your personal ID number, and then you will get the certificate. And when the students uh, did that, the municipalities usually claim that they did not serve the foreign nationals or there was a language barrier. This was a long story, but this is a story of what took place during the last year and a half. And we have really tried to serve as mediators between various uh, uh, public bodies, also what concerns vaccination, about vaccination certificates. I explained where we had the problems, uh, what didn't uh, proceed as smoothly as we have wished to. Of course, um, in our university, uh, I can um, really claim that we consider all foreign students very valuable to us, and we have invested a lot of effort during this year and a half to make sure that the quality of studies uh, is maintained, uh, as well as the, their uh, as well as their uh, life standard could be maintained. Of course, there is always room for improvement, uh, but. Uh, we have provided information to students uh, what was at that time available in the society and what concerns COVID. Uh, since we are professionals in this area, I believe that uh, students have received the most optimum assistance and uh, what the university could provide. Thank you, Mrs. Germanos, uh, for your insight. And you already highlighted uh, the problematic issues uh, that we will uh, discuss uh, in our panel discussion later. I have to underline that uh, university serving as a mediator, um, this has been a very important role, uh, not only uh, for the Stradinch University, but also in general. And maybe Mr. Saulit can now share how you provided information about COVID and uh, what uh, issues did you face uh, during this process? I can provide information and solving other problems. I think that I cannot really provide um, a lot of new information. Uh, at the very beginning, um, the first piece of information about uh, the start of the pandemic in Latvia, like what will take place in Latvia and how we will live during the pandemic in Latvia. I think the most important piece of information was um, the decision uh, to uh, start teaching remotely. But before that, actually, no specific information was sent. Uh, and uh, people could rely on the information that was provided generally. But the first specific piece of news was about remote studies. And then we start, uh, tried to establish where students are. And as it was mentioned, many students ret uh, returned to their home countries. And uh, students uh, at that time maybe were not so ready to uh, 
to engage with us and, and to provide to us uh, all the information about what they need uh, and uh, also what we can do to make their life uh, more comfortable and easier and provide better information. Post, uh, in the course of time, we also learned what we uh, need to do information wise actually uh, information uh, at the university information to students is provided on several levels like the first level general information on general changes like starting lockdown ending lockdown uh, starting curfew ending curfew but then what concerns uh, more specific details in each and every faculty there are specific decisions like which students can study in person uh, which should study remotely so this is like a faculty level um, information channel and uh, what concerns uh, routes of providing information we send uh, targeted emails either to uh, like general groups or to specific uh, or to students in specific programs as needed and as a result uh, when as a student uh, opens uh, his or her information section Mm, they can see what information has been sent to them and this information is also saved there. I think uh, for us, uh, the greatest difficulty in being the mediator was the lack of clarity, this uncertainty. As it was mentioned before, um, uh, this information to universities was also not really clear. And while we received this information, as we saw, like, you know, the government starts deciding on Monday and eventually makes the decision only on Friday, like during the last lockdown, we saw like Friday evening when the working day was over, they made the decision that next morning uh, already takes place, uh, sorry, it takes force. And this is not really uh, right to provide information to people, in particular, if we speak about foreign nationals uh, who need information in other languages. So these are the main difficulties, uh, I think, that we faced as a university, what concerns providing of information. There is a question to the representative of the University of Latvia from the foreign student group. How often uh, does the University of Latvia send information? Do you also send information about the restrictions? On a central level, this information is sent when there are these global changes, like, uh, for example, the lockdown starts. When the lockdown ends, we will also send information that uh, uh, information on how we will proceed. Uh, but also, each faculty uh, specifies uh, in detail how they will operate. Thank you. But I also have an additional question to representatives of both universities. In your opinion. Do you think that students were uh, adequately or not adequately informed about uh, the spread of the virus in Latvia and the imposed restrictions? Like in your opinion, with hindsight, do you think that the information actually reaches foreign student communities? I think I cannot uh, provide uh, uh, a very um, clear answer in this regard. We send this information. We provide uh, uh, the sources of uh, information where they can monitor on a daily basis what changes are made. But maybe where we could improve uh, our communication is uh, because we really focused on uh, the newcomers, like first year students, and not so much focused on the current students. By default, assuming that they actually could find their way around this information uh, in the information uh, space, and this could be improved. 
tā informācija tiek pietiekoši uztvērta. But whether the information is perceived adequately, understood adequately, I think that there could be gaps. We can and we see that from follow-up questions being asked, from additional explanations being asked from us. If we look at ourselves, like if we can actually 100% understand everything that the government decides about the situation, I have to say that we are also quite in a complicated situation. It's difficult to understand and to convey it further. Maybe we do not convey all the details or maybe it's our interpretation of things. So this information, uh, so to say, passes several heads or passes several hands and eventually ends up being modified in, in one way or the other. So maybe something is lost in this uh, chain of communication. Thank you. I would also like to uh, involve uh, Liana Levada from Ministry of Education in this discussion. I would like to ask the following. Uh, did the ministry undertake some information coordination role in cooperation with universities or it was left to the universities? So what was the engagement of the ministry? If uh, we speak about uh, provision of information from the very beginning, we try to do everything together with universities because the universities and the colleges actually knew what is the real situation, uh, what is the situation of foreign students, whether they have uh, a place to live and so on. But we also had this coordination function um, between the foreign ministry, the migration office, uh, the Ministry of Health, the National Health Service, and we also quite often directly communicated with uh, students uh, because they asked questions directly to us. But of course, uh, things changed very quickly, in particular at the beginning of the pandemic. And in cooperation uh, with the Ministry of Health, we tried um, to provide uh, as clear information as possible and convey it further to the universities and colleges. I have additional question from the foreign student group. Uh, do universities translate information or share just the covid19.gov.lv link where inf once information is uh, posted in English because usually it's uh, with a delay like uh, a week after the uh, new measures are adopted. And where can you actually sign up for these news? Uh, like do universities on central level pre prepare information or uh, do faculties inform their students on as needed basis? I think Mr. Salutz already partially provided an answer, but maybe you could continue. What concerns a translation uh, to provide information quickly, we translate ourselves because as you rightly noted information on these home pages uh, have, is uh, posted with quite uh, a long delay for example this morning we and try to check information on what will take place after the 15th of November. Uh, this morning, there was no information in English. In Latvian, there was some information. So this is the reason why we uh, try to compile these news ourselves, and we also try to uh, post the links. And we invite the students to monitor information in these links, uh, to monitor information the official sources so that they would uh, maybe have more information, more comprehensive information about what takes place. Because as we see, our task is to, to send this information as quickly as possible about uh, any changes. And then, in addition, uh, uh, people can read uh, the full version of information in official sources. Thank you, Germanus. Ms. Ms. Germanus, maybe you would like to add something. I think quite uh, a similar 
uh, we had quite a similar approach. Uh, the uh, operative information was translated by ourselves quite often as the uh, English version of information is posted with quite a delay uh, in official sites. But if this information is available, we can in post uh, links in our emails. But as to the question whether students are informed and uh, to what extent, we can uh, put this information in front of them or send this information to them, but they have to read this information and uh, read thoroughly and also their recommendations and these have to be uh, these have to be applied and this is not so easy because there's always a human factor because there are always students who do not read emails from universities or uh, do not read them actually thoroughly and by judging by my experience if there is more information than on one a4 page it is not going to be read yes this is a modern trend i assume so you need a Twitter uh, links messages. English, uh, Quadri, you, you have um, posted a question in our chat. Uh, could you please um, uh, elaborate on this question? Yeah, um, I, my, my question was actually for the uh, university representative uh, when it comes to their specific call to action during this pandemic. Because uh, I can hear uh, the both university representative uh, their, their point of view, which is very valid. But as a university, which is the function, which is the educational center of the country, uh, resources should not be difficult to get. And also these universities are a lot of international students as well. So I wanna see what are their call to action? How do they use their resources properly in the school? Do they release uh, like an application to involve two, three students from other countries for them to get their point of view? like a risk management and impromptu risk management to see what is going on what are their uh call to action during the pandemic how is it specific like i hear different things but i want to see their own point of view when it comes to specifications do you understand what i said Universities understood the question. Uh, the, uh, the Mr. Germano says that we did not get the question. I will rephrase uh, as, uh, as I understood the question. The Quadri is actually asking what else the universities could do, like specific, very concrete uh, mode of action uh, to ensure uh, that uh, information is provided uh, better uh, with involvement of foreign students. Uh, uh, he uh, appreciated what has already been done, but he's asking for more additional active methods uh, to reach out to students and provide information to them. This is what I understood from his question, uh, like what initiatives you have, maybe you have already done something uh, to implement these more uh, proactive initiatives. And uh, thank you for the question and thank you for the opinion. I, I have to say here we uh, are two representatives from two universities and we cannot uh, provide general information about all universities in Latvia because not all universities who have foreign students are represented here. But if we look specifically at Rigestradinch University, we are not working in isolation. We have a foreign student association. We have a self-governance body uh, of students. And first and foremost, we try to hear the opinions of our students. We uh, try to understand to what extent they are satisfied with communication or not. What are the problems at this moment in time? Personally, uh, I do not see uh, what else we could do or uh, how we could increase the scope or extent of information. But of course, we would always uh, wish for information to be um, provided uh, faster. Like, for example, the last decision of uh, the government, uh, like on the lockdown, we know that the lockdown ends this uh, Sunday. Uh, and 
uh, let us imagine there is a foreign student who is now in another country and he is supposed to return to Riga in just a few days. And I understand that students are not satisfied with this situation because the university cannot really make a decision about student studies until the government decides how we will uh, exit the lockdown. And if the university has not received information in due time, we cannot really uh, run in front of the train, so to say. We cannot provide this information. As soon as the government uh, made a decision about the study process uh, after November 15th, the university uh, could act quick uh, act and, and, and uh, issue an eternal order and also inform the students. I understand colleagues and I understand uh, students uh, and also student representatives, but these uh, but speaking about questions, I think these are the matters that are very general that apply to all universities and all students uh, in general. If uh, student uh, bodies, uh, NGOs um, that uh, take care of foreign students, I think uh, we have, uh, if you have questions, maybe you have to deal um, directly with a specific university, maybe why the student self-governance body. I would also like to offer a brief comment. Systemically, the ministry and the government uh, during this year and a half, uh, we have uh, streamlined the legal framework in particular for uh, foreign students, like that the universities have to provide information in due time to foreign students about security and safety protocols, about the procedure that should be followed to return or to enter Latvia if uh, the student doesn't have a, an interoperable uh, COVID uh, certificate uh, and they want to uh, receive one here or to or have their certificate recognized but i think uh, universities also do a lot and uh, situations differ in various universities also i think it is quite decisive how long the, stu uh, the university has received foreign students and we see that the more experience they have with foreign students uh, the easier it was for them to react in this crisis situation. Of course, this is a novel situation. No one has experienced it before and no one was ready for it before. But I think uh, it is also of great importance how the students communicate with universities, like via maybe student self-governance bodies or foreign student associations or other bodies that have been created in the largest universities. Thank you. And I will continue with uh, a question uh, from Quadri, who is uh, one of our panelists. I would like to give the floor. I would like to invite you to move to the next part of the discussion during which we uh, are supposed to speak about recommendations and, uh, and uh, possible solutions of the current problems. But Quadri clarified his question and is asking to uh, the universities and the ministry whether ministry and universities plan to set up like a risk management group with a translator do you have uh, any uh, any such plans or is it actually possible to rephrase the question maybe i will begin by saying that this uh, the type of group Maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, it's not planned, at least in this format, but the ministry uh, maintains constant communication with universities and uh, the colleges, as well as other bodies, and we take into account the recommendations and problems faced uh, by uh, universities. For example, in the legal framework, something is, is included or not included, um, and then the universities provide feedback uh, 
they submit their recommendations on how to set up systemically, uh, how to set up a systemically correct approach as to translate uh, it's difficult uh, it's difficult to say about what concerns a university and ministry cooperation, but maybe uh, universities can provide more comments. Uh, if I could add, we have a risk management group uh, in at Stradinch University, but I think that will not uh, provide a direct contribution um, as our foreign students would uh, understand that. We have a risk management group that uh, consists of uh, professionals from various uh, areas, and they make uh, customized decisions on how, for example, we will um, ensure that epidemiological requirements are uh, met at Stradinch University, or how we will purchase face marks. And this is what the Crisis Management Commission does. But I think that does not uh, provide any direct contribution. Uh, Stradinch University employs translators, but I don't uh, know what contributions they will make to foreign students, because foreign students can freely communicate in English with uh, the administrative bodies of the foreign student department, like any member of the personnel as well, and, and for this purpose the translator is not needed. If um, you think that the uh, university could work like an emergency service 24-7, I do not think that the university will be available for that. Yes, we will be available during the office hours. We will uh, consider and, and, and uh, provide information that is available, publicly available, and uh, we will uh, disseminate two types of information on the study process and on the uh, daily matters, daily living matters. I do not think that I can add a lot. Risks are um, quite an extensive notion if we speak about a COVID situation. Mm. Yes, we also have a people, uh, a group of people that monitor the situation and discuss how one or the other process uh, could proceed in this context. But what concerns a communication? Uh, as to translation about uh, our messages, our news, uh, yes, we do translate them uh, to uh, convey this information as uh, quickly as possible. But as I already mentioned, we have a communication on several levels, and, and, and each and every person uh, on a specific level uh, focuses on that level. So I don't know if we can really speak about more centralized approach in this regard. I see that there are questions. There is a question from Abu about how universities currently address the uh, dropout of students due to COVID-19 situation, uh, due to late vaccination, or due to uh, academic leaves. Uh, currently, the academic leaves basically is the only solution. Uh, thank you. I can answer about Stradinch University. Uh, foreign students who had uh, uh, who had um, any delays with having their vaccination certificates recognized at the National uh, Health Service, uh, all of these students in September. Uh, the speaker corrects herself in October. Uh, actually, by the end of October, the students were able to study remotely because uh, the problems were not caused by the students because students had done everything possible. The problem was the capacity of the National Health Service in reviewing these requests. Stradinch University, uh, as early as in June, informed all foreign students, as well as uh, potential students, that uh, studies will be possible only if you are fully vaccinated with an interoperable EU 
uh, or, or interoperable certificates per se. If uh, any student uh, chose not to vac not to get vaccinated, then unfortunately there was no access to studies, and only in this case an academic leave was offered. And I can say that uh, of approximately 2,600 students, I think only two students uh, received uh, academic leave because of this reason, since I did not want to get vaccinated. At uh, the University of Latvia, there is no requirement. I don't think we impose this academic leave on anyone. We try to find solutions on an uh, individual basis, uh, but of course, we have to operate according to the law. And if according to the law, we can, uh, we can uh, provide the studies only in the so-called green mode, then we don't have much choice. There are some programs where remote um, learning is easier, like business management, and then, of course, uh, we use this opportunity and we rely more on this approach. But in medicine, where actually in-person uh, participation is of critical importance, then we really try to look for solutions. But uh, each case is reviewed on... Uh, Case by case, base, case by case basis, and there is no one general approach that you know everyone now has to have an academic leave. Abu, I see you have raised the hand. Do you want to follow up with another question? Uh, yes, uh, I would like to comment on this thing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Germanos and uh, Mr. Solidis on this uh, comments about uh, academic leave. Um, unfortunately, uh, the information what we have and the comments what you gave contraindicate uh, because some students uh, reported to us that they were forced to seek academic leave uh, due to this uh, situation of uh, not having a COVID-19 certificate as majority of the students who don't have a COVID-19 certificate is because of the situation with the National Health Services that uh, they are overloaded with the capacity to issue the interoperable certificate. Uh, because of this, uh, uh, before uh, we moved on into the lockdown recently, some of the students were asked not to attend the classes without uh, the interoperable certificate. Uh, right. So, but I, I would like to understand one thing, like this is the one of the questions from the other students also, uh, when we moved to the online mode, uh, even for medicine faculty or any other faculty, uh, let's understand, yes, it's important that for medicine faculty, especially in the clinical years, it's important for us to go to the hospitals to learn. But the situation was not permitting that many had respiratory symptoms as per the law, even if you have a respiratory uh, any distress or if you have any problems, you voluntarily have to not attend the class. Right. So, uh, however, some students were forced to uh, drop out of the classes and uh, uh, which rendered them ineligible to continue in the classes, even if it was online mode, because they missed uh, a number of classes, which was the prerequisite for the course. So I would like to highlight this and bring to your attention from both the universities. So there are some students who are facing this issue. So although it is not generalized, as you said, and the student universities are looking on each and every matter, but some students were forced to seek an academic leave and there was no solution offered to it. So my request from behalf of other students also, please do look into it as we have the online mode going on. So maybe for such students, it would be allowed to continue online until they get an interoperable certificate. That way they don't lose on their academics and continue to become doctors as soon as we can. Thank you, that's my comment. Yeah, I'd like to reply. As we uh, know, the study is uh, resumed in person, and according to the current guidelines, 
a student can participate uh, in the study process if the student is fully vaccinated and has this interoperable certificate. I mentioned that several students had problems uh, in receiving in due time uh, an interoperable certificate that was validated by the public health service. Currently, we don't have any such uh, students because everyone, well, uh, every certificate was verified. And I really have to say thank you to the Ministry of Education because with their assistance, it was possible. But currently, if any student cannot participate in the study process, this is their personal choice not to get vaccinated. And I would like to reiterate that uh, of 2,600 students, uh, we have only two on academic leave for this reason. If uh, during any uh, stage in studies, there'll be remote studies, this is not of importance anymore uh, if you are vaccinated or not vaccinated. But to have just uh, remote studies for one or two students uh, from the group or from the year, um, the university cannot provide such uh, individualized approach. I can I just agree that a hybrid model where some students uh, could have uh, remote studies and the rest of students in-person studies, uh, this is not uh, feasible technically and also financially uh, due to uh, limited resources. But as I mentioned before, the university is not imposing the leave on anyone. Yes, there were problems with having certificates recognized, and there was a complicated case with India COVID Shield, uh, if I'm not mistaken, certificate. Publicly, it was mentioned. It was uh, it was um, indicated that this vaccine is recognized, but in practice, it was not yet recognized in Latvia. But now this has been solved, and the students can receive certificates. So this is solved. But as far as uh, we have seen, as the situations are very diverse, and uh, you cannot really generalize them because they are European certificates like when people come without any certificate or it cannot be read or there are some other problems that should be solved that require unique solutions so we cannot really generalize because you have to work with each and every case on individual basis I cannot claim that all for have received a interoperable certificates uh, because as I mentioned, we do not always have uh, comprehensive feedback. Either uh, students don't read our emails uh, or maybe for some other reason, we do not really establish uh, contact with them and, and we cannot establish their status. But in general, I think the situation is uh, quite uh, good. Most uh, students return to in-person studies and they will be able to do that if they uh, are vaccinated and have received the certificate. Paldies, as I, I see Quadri has uh, raised his hand. Uh, please go, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, we don't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Technology. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the universities and the ministry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, what everybody was, what the university was saying, there's a fact in it. There is a valid validation on it. But we're talking about the specific measures. How what the university and the ministry were saying, how can we prove it in a specific parameters? How can this information be aligned? We can see it aligned. And then if you can hear what Habu said, uh, all the points Habu was giving, 
is is saying it in a way of giving a solution. By for instance, um, university said uh, they send information to students, but students don't read it. But how can we know that the students don't read this information? What are the feedback? How does the what are the parameters of the email for them to be able to understand the call to action of that email in the pandemic? That is the number one issue that we should look into. Uh, most of the response from the ministry and the response from the universities are really valid, but we don't under it's not coming from the professional point of view by giving a specific information based on the risk management organization. Because if this information, this discussion needs to prove the, the valid data of it. Who are the people that do this research? How are the people that communicate to the students? How do they get this information? So this information is not direct for us to understand what exactly, how did they get this information from the students? Because this is the problem we're having now. How does the information pass through to the student? How do the students recognize the information? So everybody's in the everybody, everybody is in the right point, but what are the solutions now? What are the points that can be like a call to action? And it has to be specific. Newsletter, risk management, people in the offices that based on this information. Yes, we have Ministry of Health involved in this, giving us information, but how does it translate it to the different university understanding? Because every university is like a you know is like a what uh what health organization because they have different nationalities, different students in their universities, meaning information is coming into their universities in different in a random way. So we need to understand what are the specific solutions that can help everyone, big uh universities, the student and the minister of health. How can we how can they work together to achieve a specific information so that the student can understand exactly what is going on. Because everybody's saying everything, but it looks like we're not looking at the real point, the solution itself here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Quad, for you. Um, uh, quite good that you already reflected because that's our next uh, next section of the discussion of uh, reflecting on what we heard from the representatives from both of the universities and the ministry and also move into solutions of what can we possibly do better to solve the challenges that uh, that we mentioned so abu uh, i i also saw that you have messaged me also in the chat so i want to ask you um, just very briefly, maybe you can reflect on, on what the universities said, you as a foreign student also, and as a representative from the foreign student community, do you feel that support that the universities mentioned? We heard that Mr. Saulit is from the University of Latvia mentioned that the university is translating information as quickly as they can, and they are sending emails to, to the foreign students. Uh, at the University of Laffey and also um, Dr. Germanus mentioned that the Strategy University cooperates with the student association at the university and they identify the challenges and, and try to solve them once they identify them. Do you as a, as a foreign student, do you see that support from the universities? Uh, do you feel that the information provided is enough and sufficient uh, for the students? And, and what are the challenges of why students, uh, for example, don't follow the information or maybe the emails are too long and, and, and hard to understand? Like, how would you reflect on, on what, was, what was said? Yeah, thank you for the question, Max. So, uh, yes, there are uh, comments on this uh, thing. Uh, especially about uh, when the universities are giving the information to students about translating. First of all, either they are delayed, not coming on time, uh, one thing. And second thing, uh, just recent uh, days, like in the last month when the lockdown was announced, there was a situation where, uh, wherein both the universities, uh, I would like to say LU and RSU both, uh, wherein the students of different faculties received uh, contraindicating information in, in a span of 24 hours. For example, uh, uh, concerning to the, okay, we all knew that it is going to be uh, a lockdown. We have to sit at home. Uh, coming to the point where uh, how the study process is organized and what is the government recommendation on the study process. So there was some uh, uh, chaos among the students as to what is the actual information because the information was delayed or the information was communicated in a contraindicating manner uh, in various set of emails. 
right? So because there was a clause, especially for the medicine faculty from the government saying that in the clinical years, you are allowed to go and practice in the hospitals. Uh, however, the information which students received previously did say that everything is online. In next 20, within 24 hours, the information was said it is face to face. Again, information changes, it is going to be online or the professors are going to decide. So this is where the students uh, were in a dilemma and there was a chaos as to what is the actual information and what to believe and what not to believe. So uh, my opinion is uh, rather than sending these contradicting information, so it is better uh, we get one specific email uh, where we say like, what is the next course of action for the respective faculties, not just generalizing. I understand uh, so University of Latvia and RSU or RTU, they have the different faculties and uh, sometimes the information comes from the student services concerning the general matter what the government is said but again when the information comes the faculties decide it is too late because as we see many students tend to you know like they book the flights they go away because this is the trend which universities have also uh, seen this is especially happening with the eu students and less with the third country nationals as the flights are too expensive so no one is uh, going away so fast so this is one of the challenges which uh, we need to address. And the second thing, uh, please utilize the social media channels much more effectively uh, from the university side, because that is where you can communicate to the students in a much effective way and in a single line uh, thing. So rather than sending out a, a full email, so that's where majority of the students are looking at the information source. So rather than getting a contraindicating information or some information from different sources. So this is how universities can mitigate this uh, issue by putting up the information on social media in both Latvian and English languages. Because we have seen the information usually comes in Latvian and then it takes some time to get translated back to English. So uh, some, somewhere this has to be uh, addressed uh, in my opinion, I would say. Yeah, uh, thank you, Abu. You commented a lot on, on how the study process is organized, but maybe I can ask a, a quadria question in regard to information about restrictions or uh, information in regard to COVID. Uh, do you feel that support from, from your respective university and from the students around you, are they well informed? And do you, do you feel that support from the universities in regard to understanding the current measures of controlling the spread of virus and, and also what would be your uh, solutions? What would you propose for the universities to, to do better so the information is, is better spread across the foreign student community? Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you so much. Um, 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 first of all, uh, the information the informations are already there. There are a lot of information going on, but the information is not specific as, I, as I'm still repeating again. Uh, people are not understanding what are the call to action of those information? And sending email to asking the university, in universities were not able to give a concrete response based on the needs. So generalizing is different, but giving a solution to, to needs that different universities may need. Because if you're from Larry University, you're from RSU, you are from Riga Technical University, you are from Boston International Academy, you have your different understanding because your students come into the country differently. So my 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 very direct uh, solution would be first of all is to have the clarification of the from the different faculty. Have one person that can understand what are the needs of the faculty based on the pandemic because this is one number one thing. And then as Abu said, email can be sent based on the faculties, and this can give in which can be like a newsletter. And this newsletter can give people what are the call to action and specific needs. And the second one is about the risk management. What I mean by risk management doesn't mean you, as I, as I heard from the two representatives, they say you already have group of people, they are professionals, but this professional cannot handle this issue alone. They need a support system. They need a, they need a, they need a non-understanding and understanding people, people that doesn't care about the pandemic and that can get a point of view of those people. So you need, people that can do the brainstorming and these professional in top can manage it. Because I can hear at the University, uh, 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 Mr. Professor Janison saying, uh, they have uh, different steps, different uh, people involved in this, which is a good thing. But how, how, how is the step like? So we need to have a, a brainstorming team 
that can understand the needs and the solution during this pandemic. And the, the, the last one is the health official, who are the people responsible for this communication overall, which you call the, prof the professionals in charge of the, uh, of the pandemic risk management. So we need somebody responsible in the university that is managing this team, that is managing this communication, because it looks like if I hear what the two representative is saying, and I hear what the minister is saying, it looks like there's a conflict in communication there as well. When they when three of them are talking, so it means in this case there is no concrete information for the student to get. Because when you take your time listening to the three, uh, the representative and the ministry, you know that there's a conflict in their in in their communication as well. Meaning that this thing is not well structured and there's no specific result. So this is my one uh, faculty clarification, brainstorming team, and responsible for this. Uh, for for the all um, COVID nineteen situation. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Quadri. Uh, Garrett, you've been listening for quite a while of uh, what the, what the university has mentioned of what kind of mechanisms and and uh, initiatives to spread the information among the among the students. And you've also heard what the what the students say, and, mm -hmm. and you're also an academic staff of a university, and you're also mm -hmm. a foreign national. And mm -hmm. how would you reflect on what you heard? And what do you think, what can we all, not only the universities, but also the foreign students and the associations and the non-governmental -gover organizations, what can we possibly uh, do better to, to spread the information? Yeah. I mean, I think it's something in general that's a problem um, with a lot of information that um, it's not always available, even sometimes in Latvian information is not available. And um, I mean, I think also, I'm not going to say, I mean, this is not, this is a kind of not university thing, but I think sometimes even when information is available in English and certain government websites, um, I can't really understand what it's saying, or um, you have to kind of actually be better to read the Latvian in the first place because then it's kind of the definitive version. And I think that um, perhaps that's also kind of another issue that if we're going to put information into English, um, it needs to be kind of quite high quality English. And that's not always very easy when we're dealing with language that is, <laughs> I think for a lot of us is quite new and things of the pandemics that, you know, we've kind of had to quite a lot of new kind of ideas. Um, one of the things that the, that the university um, administration representatives said, and I kind of, and I very much agree with them, and I think it applies to all of us in a way um, that we, in all of our positions, that we're all kind of between um, different things, and um, you know between different kind, you know at different levels. So above there, above the administration is the ministry, then uh, you know, above. Well, you know, in, in a way, the, the academic staff are kind of in be, are, are in between as well. And I think sometimes, you know, you you can kind of see if it feels a bit complicated to have to say, well, I don't know either. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, and I and I think that, you know, in a way, we have to sometimes kind of not lose sight of the fact that we can't reform, we can't have a complete reform of society overnight because um, there's a pandemic on. Um, and maybe that's kind of part of the problem in general, that, I mean, kind of more communication, out, even outside universities would be quite helpful. I'll give an example from yesterday. Um, the health minister kind of tweets the news about kind of booster vaccinations. And then people ask questions. Well, at least there's one question. And I'd love to have known the answer to the question. But then there's no answer to the question. And there's like an opportunity lost for people who could have got information to get it. And I think that that's maybe for me, I, know, I, I, I just wish there was kind of one place that information was kept. And I, and I, that it, you know, whether it's for students or for anybody else, that you can just kind of go to and it's, and it's kind of reliable. And there is the stuff. Um, that you need to know and I find that slightly you know I, I, it gets tiring I think sometimes to have to search round and round and round and then of course it's a good idea to have e you know to have e email you know, newsletters and um, I think that that's a good idea but I do understand of course that the information changes quite rather rapidly and um, you know I, I, 
I I think that sometimes we have to be we have to be aware that maybe there's more systemic problems that you know that trying to solve them is going to be quite is going to be it's going to require quite a lot of you know things at kind of multilateral levels that um, are as kind of you know things look possible and you think that's possible but it turns out it's actually not possible for this reason and there's all that kind of regulations and you have to do this and that and that so I mean I I just I I wonder also to what extent students are are you know kind of specialed out as a thing um, I, I, and I think this is an, an interesting question that's been that's kind of been brought up there as well about where students should get information from, and I think that's you know and I, I think kind of in the lack of information that universities should do that because we you know students are getting a service from the university, but sometimes I do you know I, I kind of I do feel that it's quite difficult on one hand to actually give information that you don't know. And also, there's the kind of legal aspect is when you translate something, are you translating it correctly? And is it going to be right? So I can see why it takes time to translate as well. You don't want to give the, the, the false information. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I think there are things that can be done better, but there's sometimes I wonder whether, you know, you can actually, some of these problems are quite kind of, you know, quite deep seated problems that are quite, and, 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 I mean, I think I mean I think that the universities have done well, um, and what they've and what they've tried to do, and I think that they've done better than certain um, parts of communications, let's say, um, kind of more broadly um, in the country. But then again, as a pandemic, so it can be quite difficult. So it's a it's kind of yes and no, of course, as usual. Thank you very much, Gareth, and uh, with with uh, with your um, already um, a sort of roundup comment, we have uh, entered the the final phase of our uh, discussion, and uh, I will I will if you allow me uh, switch to Latvian uh, to wrap it up. I hope um, you will you will get the translation anyway. Uh, Lielis Paldies. Um, we have reached the end of our discussion, and I would like to say one thing. As Garrett already mentioned, and it became quite clear from the previous comments, we have to deal with a very complex uh, multi-layered situation. This is, we require multilateral approach action. And our purpose today was not so much to um, criticize uh, or to point uh, to gaps and drawbacks, but try to understand the current situation, the current uh, picture, uh, context, and understand what we could do better from all sides. And judging by the last comments from the students, uh, it, it's clear that, uh, yes, we could think about more specific channels like social media and specific formats, how information is conveyed to specific people in specific faculties. But at the same time, we also recognize, uh, uh, appreciate this uh, enormous effort that the universities have invested in serving as mediators because they have undertaken this information function and tried to uh, make more specific things that were quite general. Uh, yes, of course, there are challenges and, and gaps that I really hope uh, that uh, could be rectified, uh, considering also recommendations made today. Uh, speaking about translation, uh, there was a comment placed in the chat uh, earlier Speaking about translations, the state administration should uh, provide a translation in English and in Russian immediately and not with a specific delay. Yes, I can agree. And we really wanted to invite uh, representatives from the communication department from the state chancery to participate in this discussion. They unfortunately could not join us, uh, but they provided written answers, including about translation. And the uh, answer, among others, was that the communication department doesn't have enough resources to translate everything immediately. 
and to make all the information that is available in Latvian also in English and in Russian and uh, update it immediately and continuously. So as we see at the very uh, uh, top level, there is a resource problem to ensure the sufficient communication. Thus, uh, we can really praise uh, the initiative of the universities to offer translation themselves if it is not uh, available right away. But as Garrett rightly said, if we have to deal with uh, translating regulations and legal norms, it's not so easy and you have to be really careful. Today, uh, we have heard uh, an assessment of the current situation. We have heard the opinions of both parties and recommendations for further improvements. And I hope that this will eventually uh, result in uh, direct uh, improvements, uh, changes that will make this period easier, both for the students and the administration of universities and also the Ministry of Education and other public bodies. Uh, maybe any of you have any other uh, any other uh, comments that would summarize our discussion before we say goodbye. Maybe I could at the very end say uh, that uh, thank you to the universities and to Liana from the Ministry of uh, Education and thank you to students and to Garrett. I would like to invite the students uh, uh, since information, as it was rightly said, uh, translated into English with a delay, uh, with we as an organization make room, we translate the information when it's available in Latvian and we try to uh, disseminate it uh, very quickly, both in social media and in various WhatsApp groups. But I also invite, uh, would like to invite our foreign students and universities just to share this information that has been quickly translated, to share this information in your communities where we uh, that we have not yet uh, reached uh, as, as an NGO. And I see Abu, you have raised a hand and, and Quadri, but maybe very, very, very briefly because we are already over the time. So just a maximum five to 10 words. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the ministry and the university representative. Thank you so much. We're really happy to have you here. Um, I want to give this point, like uh, this conversation, I want it to come in the very positive mind. It should not go in the very negative mind because when people go back to digest information, they make it very negative. There's a women psychology. I just want you to understand that we are all, all with you and us. We're just looking for a way to make a better place for the foreigners in Latvia, not going against you, but trying to improve something better for you and make your job easier as the school and also as the ministry. Thank you so much. Yes, um, uh, closing words from me. Thank you very much for having this discussion. And on behalf of uh, Indian Economic Trade Organization, so we commend the efforts taken by the Ministry of Education, the universities in bringing all this uh, situation and trying to solve it. So yes, just there are some drawbacks. We all have to work together to, you know, like find some good solution. Uh, thank you so much uh, for a wonderful discussion, uh, Mix and to providers and uh, Eva. Uh, hope we all find some solutions and uh, make this situation a much better one. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Diaz. Thank you. And if you would like to uh, return to any of the questions, Mm, uh, this uh, discussion will be recorded and available on Providus uh, Facebook page. And I hope that this multilateral discussion will not end here. Uh, thank you to everyone for participation and as a time you devoted to this event and I hope to meet you in uh, thoughts and in uh, deeds in the future and have a nice afternoon. Thank you and goodbye.